Hello everyone, welcome to Jolly Molly TV. Today we're going to be working on another fun block in Kimberbell's Red, White, and Bloom quilt slash wall hanging project. And today we're going to work on this block right here called Relish Today. Catch up tomorrow. That's cute. So go ahead and grab your plastic pouch system or plastic bag system that's called Relish Today. And let's take it over to the embroidery machine and let's get started making this block. Okay, we are at the machine. You excited to get started? All right, I am using a piece of the Poly No Show Mesh Stabilizer in my eight by eight hoop. Now I chose the eight by eight only because it's easier for you to see on camera than my smaller five by seven, but you can definitely use a five by seven hoop for this block. In fact, if you're looking at the instructions on page 19, it's showing that the design is 4.59 inches by 4.63 inches. So it will totally fit in a five by seven hoop. So we've got the poly no show mesh stabilizer in the hoop. Now let's go to the screen. Just in case you have something similar, I have a brother dream machine so you can follow along. We're going to add the designs onto the embroidery machine. So I'm going to click embroidery. I'm going to go to my flash drive. I'm going to go to red, white, and blue. Because we're quilting as we go, I want to add the quilting design first. Now, if you look on page 19 of the instructions at the bottom, right, you see the square finished block at when we're all done is going to be six and a half by six and a half inches wide. So the quilting design that I am going to be looking to add is a six by six. That will be a perfect fit for this block. Okay. So I'm going to click set and now I'm going to add the applique design on top. Now, if you can't add another file, don't worry, stitch out the quilting design first, clear your machine and then come back in and bring up the applique and stitch that out. So let's go to my flash drive, red, white, and bloom. And now we're going to be looking for the relish today block, which is right down here. That's the one we're working on today. I'm going to click on that. That's going to be fun to make. So let's click set. It brings it in on top of the quilting design. It's perfect. I don't need to move it or do anything to it. I'm going to click embroidery. So we are ready to go. So let's go back to the hoop cam. And I want white thread in the top of the machine because we're going to stitch out now the placement line for the batting. All right. So let's foot down and let's go. go. Okay, so now we're going to get the batting and I'm going to lay this down on top just so it covers all of the placement lines. Should go this way. Better fit. We're good. You can either tape it down or hold it down like I do and leave white thread on top of the machine and let's put the foot down and let's tack down this batting. Now we're going to take the hoop off the machine. We're going to go over to a table and we're going to trim away all of this excess batting. All the battings trimmed up nicely. Now I'm getting out my background fabric so I can match the thread quilting to it. I definitely want to match to match on this one. This is really pretty. 
It's like an aqua. It has some swirls and it has some glitter on it. So what I've chosen to use in this next step, the tack down and the quilting is this really pretty aqua, tur kind of a turquoise that's going to blend right into this fabric. So to tack this fabric down, I'm going to use this thread in the top and then I'm going to use it again for the quilting stitch. Okay. So I'm going to take that fabric back off. I'm going to put this thread in the top of the machine. And the next stitch we're going to stitch out is the placement line of where we're going to put our background fabric. So pick a color thread that either matches your background fabric. If you want it to blend in or if you want it to stand out, you could go bold and do a color like white or something that would stand out on this block. Whatever color fabric you have, choose something that you want for the tack down and for the quilting stitch. All right. So once you've got that thread up on top, let's put the foot down and let's stitch out the placement line for the fabric. Okay, so now I'm going to lay my fabric down. If it's directional, you want to make sure that you have it in the direction that you want it to be for the top of the block. Make sure you've got all of the placement lines covered and you can even feel the batting so you know approximately that you're centered, which is good. Okay, either tape the fabric down or hold it down like I do. And same color thread that you want on the top. This is going to be for the tack down and for the quilting. So put your foot down and let's tack down this fabric. Okay, so I'm going to use the same color thread for my quilting. So I'm going to put the foot down and start the quilting process. It's about three minutes, but make sure you have whatever color thread you want your block to be quilted in up on the top. And here we go. Enjoy. Isn't that cool? I love the look at that with the swirls. It's just really cool. If you look one way, your eye goes to the plaid. You look the other way, it goes to the swirls. That's great. I like that. Okay, so now we're ready to start on the applique. The first thing we're going to do is stitch the mustard bottle placement line. Now the instructions on page 19 show like a generic color. I always tend to do the placement line and the tack down of the fabric in the same color as the fabric because that there's no possibility of an oddball color thread popping through. So I've chosen this kind of a golden yellow for my mustard and I've chosen a golden yellow thread to do that with. So I'm going to go ahead and put that yellow thread up at the top of my machine. 
Okay, so foot down and let's stitch out the placement line for the mustard bottle. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to put down my mustard fabric. If it's directional, make sure you've got it facing up the way you want it. And I'm going to hold it down with my stylus. And let's tack down the mustard fabric. All right, so now I'm gonna take the hoop off the machine. I'm gonna take it over to the table. I wanna trim away this excess fabric. The mustard bottle is trimmed up. So now the next one's gonna be relish. So I've found my green fabric and I've found a green thread that will go very nicely with that. So I'm gonna put this green thread in the top of my machine. All right, so you've got your thread up on the top of the machine that's gonna match your fabric for the relish bottle. So let's put the foot down and stitch out the placement line for the relish bottle. Bye. Okay, so I'm gonna put my fabric down. My piece is a little bit bigger than what I need. So not a problem. I'm just gonna make sure that it covers those placement lines without a problem. And foot down and let's tack down the relish fabric. Okay, so now I'm going to take the hoop off the machine, go over to the table, and we're going to trim away this excess fabric. Looking good now. Okay, so now we're gonna work on the ketchup bottle. So I've chosen a red thread, which I'm gonna put in the top of my machine, which will blend nicely with my ketchup material. So I'm gonna put this thread on the top of the machine. Okay, so my red thread is in the top of the machine. Foot down and let's stitch out the placement line for the ketchup bottle. All right, so get that out of the way. I got a little long thread there. I'll trim that. All right, so now I'm gonna put my ketchup bottle fabric down and I'm just gonna, again, make sure that I cover all those placement lines and we are good to go. Foot down and let's tack down the ketchup bottle. Yeah. That looks good, another long thread. Trim that off. Now take the hoop off the machine. I'm gonna take it over to the table and I wanna trim away all of this excess fabric. Isn't it 
coming together. Okay, ready for the next step? The next step is going to be to stitch the ketchup bottle lid fill. Now they're showing it with kind of a brighter red for the lid. And then step eight is going to be the sat knot line a little darker. So I pulled out my favorite reds again, and I'm going to use this one for the lid. And then I'm going to use this one for step eight for the outline around the bottle. But I want the top of it to be like a true ketchup color. So mm -hmm. I'm going to put this thread in my thread strand and run it through the top of my machine. Okay, so I've got the brighter red on top, and now it's going to do the lid of the ketchup bottle. Here we go. That looks good. So I'm going to take that bright red thread off of my machine. Remember, pull straight out towards you. The thread was meant to come out the thread path of the machine. You don't want to pull it back up because that is not how it was designed to do it. And that could cause problems with your machine. So this is an easy little trick of the trade. Just make sure that you always put your thread Pull, cut it at the top and pull it straight out when you're switching your threads. Okay, so now I've got the darker thread in there. And now we're going to run the satin outline stitch of the ketchup bottle. Here we go. This is about a two minute stitch out. Doesn't that look good? Okay, so now we're gonna do the relish. We're gonna do the same type of thing. I think I like what they show, a lighter green on the top. And then this will be the, actually, I think this will be the outline of the bottle. There you go. So top of the lid, and then this will be the outline for the bottle. So I'm gonna put this thread in the top of my machine. Okay, and if you ever watched any of my other videos, I talk about loops. If you thread your machine and you get a loop like this, take that loop out, get it unlooped. If you don't, it could wrap itself around your foot and it'll break your needle in a second. It's very quick to do that. And again, when I'm selecting thread colors throughout any of these projects, feel free to change it up, to do whatever you want to do for your project. Obviously, I'm doing colors and this quilt that are different than the sample than the thread kit so you can change it up you can do whatever fabrics you want and whatever thread you want this is where you get your creative license to do whatever you want color wise with these designs so pick the color you want for the top of your relish bottle and let's put the foot down and let's stitch it out All right, so now we've got the top lid of the relish bottle done. Again, pulling the thread out 
the machine. Now I'm going to put the thread I want for the outside of the relish bottle, which is going to be satin stitches. So I'm going to put this brighter green thread up on top. Choose your color thread, load it on your machine, and let's stitch out the satin stitches. This is about a two minute stitch out. Here we go. Looking good. All right, so now I'm going to take the green thread out of the top of the machine, pulling the thread again out, and we're going to do the mustard bottle. So I've chosen the lighter yellow for the top of the lid, and then this golden yellow that matches the bottle itself will be the next step for the satin stitches. So I'm going to put this brighter yellow thread up on top. You choose the colored thread that you want for your mustard lid. Put it in your machine and let's stitch out the lid. Oh, little hoop. Get that loop out. Okay, here we go. Okay, so now I'm going to switch out the yellow and put the darker yellow up on the top of my machine. And then we have about a two minute stitch out where it's going to stitch the satin stitches around the outside of the mustard bottle. So, so put the thread of your choice up on top and let's go. is fun. Okay, so I'm going to take the yellow thread out. Now, the next step, we're going to be stitching out the words relish today. And Kimberbell shows their relish today in a black thread. And then it shows uh, the next phase, a catch up tomorrow in like a very, very, very dark gray, almost black, but not black. So, like I did with the last block, I'm going to change mine up a little bit. Okay, black would look good. All right. Black would look good on this. No problem with that. But I'm thinking, because I have kind of a turquoise blue color, that white would be very nice as the phrase relish today. It would show up very nicely on this block. Then, I'm going to do something wild. <laughs> The phrase says, relish today, catch up tomorrow. So, what if I did relish today in white and catch up tomorrow in catch up color of red? I think that would be so cool. And like I said, I've puddled the thread a little bit so I can see what it's going to look like on this fabric. Plus, I can see how the red looks up here. So I know that this red and satin stitches is going to be nice and bold and stand out. And so is the white. 
the white's going to show up against this fabric without any problem. And I think that would be cool. This is relish today, important. You know, it's going to stand out saying, today's important, relish today. And then red, ketchup tomorrow, is actually in ketchup color red. What do you think? I'm going to try it. I think, it, I think it's going to be fun, something different. And this, is, again, is where you can play with your thread colors. You don't have to stick to what someone tells you to do. You can. But you don't have to. You can try something, be bold. Just puddle your thread like I did, showing a bunch of thread down below, and test drive it and see what it looks like with that little puddle of thread. That way you can kind of go, yeah, it's gonna show up on this fabric, or nah, maybe not so much. Let me try something different, okay? So just pick out whatever color you think would be great. Get that loop out. We don't want that loop. And just try it, puddle it out, test it out, see what color you like, and let's go for it. So I'm gonna do white on Relish today. It's about a six minute stitch out. So here we go. I love that. Isn't that cool? All right. So I did the relish today in white. So now I'm going to do the next phrase, catch up tomorrow. I'm going to do that in my bright red. So I put my bright red because it's a big spool on my thread stand. I'm going to load it up here. Oh, I think this is going to be cool. All right, this is a four minute stitch out. So put the thread color of your choice in the top of your machine for the words catch up tomorrow. And let's stitch this out.
I am in love with that. Look at this. See what you can do if you just use your imagination, change things up a little bit. Look at that. I love the way that turned out. Black would have been cool too, but I love that offset with white. Relish today, enjoy today, that's important. And then ketchup in the color of ketchup. It seems silly, but I love it. Absolutely love it. Cool. So let's take this hoop off the machine. Let's take it over to the table and let's finish up this block. Isn't this adorable? All right. So the first thing I want to do is I want to take it out of the hoop. Okay. And put my hoop aside. Okay. This is so cute. So now we have a few jump stitches that we have to take care of. Usually on the lettering, they will have a jump stitch or two. So in between, I want to use some curved scissors so I can go under and lift up. And I only want to grab the white lettering. You've got to be really careful because you've got quilting stitches under here. So I go in an area where I'm not going to get that stitch. And I'm looking just for the white thread stitch like that. Okay, there's not too many. I see a little red one right here. Again, don't get the quilting stitch. This one's going to be real tight. Just look for the color thread, whatever color you used for your lettering. That's what you want to get up. There's a little one right here. And there was one right here with the T. The T jumped over. Okay, I just got the white thread and I take care of that. So the jump stitch, oh, there's another one between the eye. Very small. You wouldn't really notice it. There's one before and there we go. Perfect, isn't that beautiful? Love it. So now all we have left to do is to square this block up. So I'm gonna use a regular ruler and a rotary cutter to square this block up. It's going to be squared to six and a half by six and a half inches. And if you look at this outer stitch line, the one on the very outside edge, that is what was used to tack down the top fabric. Those two on the outside edge should equal six and a half inches. So I'm going to measure it right on it. Okay. Let's do it the other way. Yeah, no. I'm looking at the white, never mind. Here we go. So one, two, three, four, five, six and a half. Spot on. So that is where we're going to square it up to. So the first cut's easy. I lay it down and I see that outside stitch line. I'm going to line it up and then I'm going to go just a hair past it. Just a hair. My motto is, can I see the stitch line? Yes, I can. Now I'm good to cut. Okay. I'm good to cut. Let's get this bottom part off. As I rip it off. Okay. So now I'm going to flip this over. And I'm going to do the exact same thing. But now I'm also going to use my mat. So here it is lined up with the mat. Sure enough, six and a half. I double check one, two, three, four, five, six and a half. I'm lined up. Can I see the stitch line? Yes, I can see the stitch line just through that. And I'm good to cut. Okay. I am good to cut. And now we're good on both sides. Now I'm going to go to this side. Same thing. First cut is easy. I go to that stitch line. I'm on it. I go just a little bit to the right. Can I see the stitch line under the ruler? Yes, I can. Okay. Oops. Got it. Okay. So then this other side I line up with my mat. Okay, should be at 16 and a half, lined up, 16 and a half. Can I see the stitch line? Yes, I can, just underneath the ruler. 
and we are good look at that so we are now squared up to six and a half wide I have to get that little one off isn't that adorable look at that look at that I love it I am so glad I got creative and changed the colors on the bottom because it really makes the block pop I love that just be creative when we do these blocks you don't have to stick to the rules do whatever you want that's the most important thing so I hope you had as much fun today making this block as I did Please stay tuned to Jolly Molly TV for more videos on this project and many other Kimber Bell projects. we got a Lori Kent project coming up to take me to the beach. So I hope you are enjoying all these videos. Please subscribe to my channel and please click the like and the bell notifications. That way you'll be notified every time I upload a video. Well, I hope you had fun today and I will see you here next time on Jolly Molly TV for more fun. Until then, take care. Bye bye.